Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of NCIS Season 19, Episode 15, titled Thickest Thieves, also known as the Fluttering of My Night in Shining Palmer Heart. I, I am about to burst with joy and spread, I don't know, <laughs> starshine upon us all in just pure happiness. It was just, it's been so obvious <laughs> since the beginning when these two first had interaction that just the on-screen chemistry between these two actors is just like pop, 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 ever since the beginning. So it feels like this was just a natural progression of where we were going to go. Okay, uh, listen, guys, I with the pa Parker storyline in this episode, I'll be honest, I'm kind of just like, yeah, I don't really know, but... Uh, oh, I, I got some things to say about it. I'm just focusing right now on what I love, and what I love is Jimmy Palmer and Jessica Knight. Finally, I shouldn't say finally, this is actually pretty fast by NCIS terms. Oh, we're also going to talk about that. <laughs> well, before we go any further here... Hit that subscribe button. We are here to document every episode of this show. Mm -hmm. We will give you the real hot takes. And it's not <laughs> just all about, you know, me obsessing over some ship that I came up with a silly name for, like, I don't know, like seven or eight weeks ago. Okay, so let's just get into the ship of it all. Like I said, these two have had chemistry from the get-go. It yes. was very evident that... These two just, there, there's something there. There was a real ease with them talking, a nice back and forth, lots of nice smiles. And it's been building and building and building. And then we recently had an episode where Jimmy was ready to move on. He, was, he took off his wedding ring. He was like, you know what? It's been over a year. I I'm ready to move forward. You know, maybe not jump into dating right away, but I'm ready to move forward. And yeah. then bam. Here we are, like, right away where Jessica Knight has lost her date to the wedding. She yeah. asked Torres, nope, McGee, nope. Even Parker and Sawyer, they both rejected her. <laughs> then we had Torres kind of be like, why don't you ask Jimmy? And she's like, mm, uh, mm, mm, I don't know, maybe. We'll, we'll see. I'm like, oh, she likes him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. This is where... As everyone knows, I, I am obviously an expert in all matters of the heart, really. I'm not, but okay, just roll with me here. Okay, this is what happened. Everyone knows that going to a wedding is a very difficult first date. At times, it can be a very terrible first date. There's so much pressure, there's awkwardness, there's a lot of people who probably don't want to even be there. So I feel like, and I have no evidence of this, I feel like she didn't want to have Palmer go on the date with her at first because <laughs> it would be a very difficult environment to sort of start things off. That's why she was kind of just casually trying to get somebody else. And that's why she was so nervous to ask Jimmy because she didn't want to put him in a weird spot from the get go. This is my theory and I am sticking to it. Okay. My theory is, is that she has liked Jimmy for a hot minute <laughs> and she didn't want to ask him because she actually wants to go on a date with him where it's as easy to ask Torres, McGee, Parker, Sawyer, because she's not actually interested in any of them. The minute that it was brought up about Jimmy, she just balked on that. I was like, oh, uh, uh, I don't know, because I think she really likes him. And to ask him out on this, hey, can you be my plus one? It's not really a date, but, you know, they're both kind of like calling it a date, but they're both like, no, 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 it's not. It's not because she actually really likes him. And I think for something like this that she wanted it to be that if it was going to be a date that it was just actually going to be an obvious date where either he was going to ask her out or she would ask him out or whatever on like a date date not kind of like i need a plus one what are you doing tonight nothing okay cool you want to come yeah all right it's a date oops <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's one of these situations that I think I think the writers played off this awkwardness really really well here because I I also just really like this pairing because you know you look at Jessica Knight and she's supposedly you know the tough strong intimidating NCIS so agent awkward, I know that's what made it so great is that they're just sort of flipping that stereotype on its head because that whole scene and like Jimmy actually came across as more of kind of just like the 
confident one in that discussion where he yeah. wasn't stumbling over his words anywhere near as much. Yeah, I think when Jimmy took off his wedding ring and was like, I am ready to move on, I think he was really ready to move on, where yeah. I think Jessica's just been admiring him from, from afar for a little while yeah. now, and she's just been sort of, she's we have learned one thing about her. She is very bad at dealing with her feelings and just relationships in general, whether it's friendships, family. We, you know, she's got kind of strange relationships with her family. She has a problem letting people get close to her, or her close to anyone. So I think her having these feelings for Jimmy are just throwing her off. Yeah, she she really does not know what to do with it. And I think that's what makes it really kind of fun. And I think she wants to, you know, have this good impression be put on Palmer. And she wants this date to end up okay. And I think there is all this, like, internal pressure that she's sort of building on herself. Here's here's what Jessica Knight really needs. You, you Jessica, you need, I, and I know you're watching this video, you need someone to really confide in here you need someone to talk to unless you're willing to just open up with jimmy right away because it could do you wonders and torres torres has shown he's a good shoulder to lean on these past couple of episodes i would love to see torres sort of be you know her support buddy through all this he knows palmer so well I am so glad that they are not yes. trying to force a relationship with Jessica and Torres. I was a bit worried when she asked him at first, yeah. but I'm really glad they went in this other direction with Jimmy looking all dashing. Oh, yeah. And Jessica looking gorgeous and the two of them seeing each other. I think they both could read on each other's faces that they are interested but are not going to say anything because this is NCIS and they like the slow ride. But then we had this moment at the end where Torres kind of turned to McGee and was just like, do you think something's going on with them? And it's just like, Torres, no, nothing is going on with them. Did you not see how kind of strange and awkward it was? That's not the sign of somebody who's very comfortable with each other or touching each other or have been together or any of that. This is a very obvious first date. And I'm really surprised NCIS has moved this as quickly as they did. It's 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 a very interesting, happy kind of surprise to me. And I, I, I wonder, once again, no evidence of all of this, but I wonder if this is because in part... Okay, these two characters aren't out in the field together. It's a little bit of, I guess, a different situation. But granted, Gibbs and Sloan was a little bit of a different situation, too. And they were really, really slow with them as well. Oh, what I, they dragged that. <laughs> what I'm hoping is that this is not some sort of evidence that they're ending in CIS soon and they just felt the need to, like, rush into this. I don't think that's the case. No, I, I don't think that. I don't think it's coming to an end. Could it just be the writer's? You know, Steve Binder, you've realized that you, you've had your heart broken so many times by all these romances ending because someone leaves the show. Maybe you're just like, I got to fix it this time. I got to give people something they actually want and have it on screen. Okay, listen, I love Steve as much as the next person, but I think he knows that this works the slow burn the really like you know watching it unfold over time i think like it probably sucks for him in the fact that people do end up leaving the show while he's trying to build yeah. a slow burn and then it comes up where he's like oh no oh no i gotta i gotta like find a way to kind of tie this up because i've been building this nice long slow burn but i mean Jessica's new. She's not going anywhere, right? Jimmy, come on. He's got to be planted. Okay, I, I do have some advice for Jimmy and Jessica Knight. Uh, when you guys get married, don't have a wedding DJ because apparently Parker won't show up to your wedding. <laughs> that is the thing that we will we'll still show up. You know, we, we're, we're your champions, but no. Absolutely. Parker, okay, I guess we should just get into Parker here. Take it off. Okay, this is the thing. I really... I'm fascinated by this character. I think they've done some fun things with them. This is just not what I wanted out of a Parker episode. I, I wanted an opportunity to really kind of get to know who the man is now, like what his relationships are, what things were like with him at the FBI, maybe how he even got into all of this line of work fully. And I feel like instead of getting like a really rich backstory, we just kind of got the same note hit time and time again, which was, 
Parker used to be in juvie when he was a teenager, and here is this guy who he was, you know, hanging out with a lot in juvie around that time, Billy, and they still have this sort of relationship, and I just, this sort of story, I feel like I've seen it so many other times on other different shows, and it didn't really teach me that much about Parker, and because I, I like this character, I was just a little bit let down by that. I feel like I learned more about Billy in this episode than I learned about Parker, which was kind of a drag because I'm ready to get to really know Parker. He is sort of this international man of mystery and it would have been nice to kind of learn something further about who he is now. And even as an agent, we learned very little about him now. So that was kind of a drag. And I mean, I had a hard time believing that nothing happened to Billy at the end of this. I mean, he bribed a federal agent. He then tried to uh, threaten violence against a federal agent. And then he beat up and held at gunpoint (laughs) a suspect in a murder case. And at the end, he's just sitting on the stairs with Parker. Hey, fun times, right? I'm just like, okay, wait. Wait, no, (laughs) he broke so many laws. I understand, Parker, he's your bud. But the whole thing was sort of, is there redemption for people who go through the system or make some bad choices? And later on, you know, Billy's doing good. He's got his business together. You know, thing, things are well. And then he makes a, a series of many bad criminal yeah. choices. And Parker's just like, yes, have a bit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, this is very odd. It was unbelievable. Like, and that is sort of the thing with it is they could have pushed you know, this Billy character to sort of the edge of breaking a lot of laws. Or if he is breaking laws, maybe have him break less serious laws than bribing and threatening violence against, you know, somebody who works for the federal government. It went, it went too far. And because we don't know Billy all that much as a character, and we still don't even really know Parker all that much, I'm not really invested in their relationship. So it didn't really matter to me if Billy kind of stayed on the outside or not. I wanted this opportunity to get to know Alden Parker, the character. I kind of thought at the beginning where we had that conversation with Parker and Vance, where Vance was like, oh, well, he's a bad, you know, Billy's a bad guy. Look at his rap sheet. And then we had Parker going to the bathroom being like, hey, you know, like uh, people can reform. And that's what I actually thought the story for Billy was going to be, that it was just a... Even if you reform and you do these bad things and then you're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to change my life around. I'm going to make things different for myself. How your past follows you around, no matter how much you reform, no matter how good you change your life around, sort of like what's going on over on Snowfall, which is another show that we cover of someone who had a troubled past, turned it around, and she's still like, man, like, I am really struggling to find a job. Like, I, no matter what I do, I just can't seem to get back on my feet again. This follows me forever, which I think is a really important storyline that we don't see on TV a lot. But then here we are. Billy's pulling a gun on somebody. He's threatening a federal agent. I'm like, okay, well, there goes that. Yeah, I like your idea better than what they did because that actually gives you like somebody to really root for and an inspirational story. It's like, I don't think anybody's going to be looking at Billy out of this episode being like, you know who is really inspiring Billy on this NCIS episode? It's like, you guys didn't give us that opportunity. And so instead, I just find myself like playing 20 questions in my head of like all the different things I wish I learned about Parker. Like what's Parker's romantic history? What does Parker's house look like? Does Parker have any pets? Like, what's Parker's favorite international baked good? It's like there's so many different things they could have just given us. And I just, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I know NCIS is probably getting another season. And we've already talked about the slow ride and all that. I'm sure there will be opportunities. But this was an opportunity. And you guys could have really hit this one out of the park. No, I agree. I I felt like at least I got to know Jessica a little bit better with the way that she was acting and sort of, you know, these are the two brand new characters that I really need to get to know. And I think that they are doing a pretty decent job with Jessica, but man, Parker is still just a mystery to me. And this many episodes in, I need to have more. Yeah, we need to have more. 
And we also need to have more of the Raven story you guys freaking introduced two no, episodes ago. I... I'm all right with that. It's only two episodes ago. This is going to be the trend. I'm just going to complain about this at the end of every video until it comes back. Okay, well, we'll probably see it come back at the end of the season. You know, we're not that far yeah. off. All right, all right. Well, hit that subscribe button, guys, so you don't miss any of our other NCIS coverage. There are more episodes coming up soon. And also follow us on Instagram at Matt and Jess TV, and we will see you here next time.